Good Saturday morning, my friends. It is 8 a.m. Slept in till 7.30. Felt like a million bucks to sleep in a little bit. Um, and so, okay. Day, I think we're on day 36. I'll get you adjusted here. On February 13th. So these are a lot, it looks like it's gonna be a lot of little instructions on individual building things. Um, so here we go, we'll jump right in. Building the Ark, Exodus 37, one through nine, which is around 1446 or 1280 BC. Next, Bezalel made the Ark of Acacia wood, a sacred chest 45 inches long, 27 inches wide, and 27 inches high. He overlaid it inside and outside with pure gold, and he ran a molding of gold around it. He cast four gold rings and attached them to its four feet, two rings on each side. Then he made poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He inserted the poles into the rings at the sides of the Ark to carry it. Then he made the Ark's cover, the place of atonement, from pure gold. It was 45 inches long and 27 seven inches wide. He made two cherubim from hammered gold and placed them on top of the two ends of the atonement cover. He molded the cherubim on each end of the atonement cover, making it all one piece of gold. The cherubim faced each other and looked down on the atonement cover. With their wings spread above it, they protected it. Building the table. Exodus 37, 10 through 16. Then Bezalel made the table of acacia wood, 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 27 inches high. He overlaid it with pure gold and ran a gold molding around the edge. He decorated it with a three inch border all around and he ran gold molding along the border. Then he cast four gold rings for the table and attached them at the four corners next to the four legs. The rings were attached near the border to hold the poles that were used to carry the table. He made these poles from acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he made a special container of pure gold for the table, bowls, ladles, jars, and pitchers to be used in pouring out liquid offerings. Building the lampstand, Exodus 37, 17 through 24. Then Bezalel made the lampstand of pure hammered gold. He made the entire lampstand and its decorations of one piece. The base, the center stem, the lamps, cups, buds, and petals. The lampstand had six branches going out from the center stem, three on each side. Each of the six branches had three lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. The center stem of the lamp stand, stand was crafted with four lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. I just read the same sentence twice in a row. No, nope, I guess I didn't. <laughs> it's two very similar sentences. <laughs> there was an almond bud beneath each pair of branches where the six branches extended from the center stem, all made of one piece. The almonds, almond buds and branches were all of one piece with the center stem and they were hammered from pure gold. He also made seven lamps for the lampstand, lamp snuffers, trays, and all of pure gold. The entire lampstand, along with its accessories, was made from 75 pounds of pure gold. Building the incense altar, Exodus 37, 25 through 29. Then Bezalel made the incense altar of acacia wood. It was 18 inches square and 36 inches high, with horns at the corner carved from the same piece of wood as the altar itself. He overlaid the tops, sides, and horns of the altar with pure gold, and he ran a gold molding around the entire altar. He made two gold rings and attached them on the opposite side of the altar below the gold molding to hold the carrying poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Then he made the sacred anointing oil and the fragrant incense using the technique of a skilled incense maker. You know what I wonder? If somebody figured out the value based on today's value of gold, how valuable this was, because gold is stupid expensive now. I don't know what it was back then. I would imagine it was expensive because that's why they used it for this, but I'd be interested to know. All right, building of the altar of burnt offering, Exodus 38, one through seven. Next, Bezalel used acacia wood to construct the square altar of burnt offering. It was seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet long, and four and a half feet high. He made horns for each of its four corners so that the horns and the altar were all one piece. He overlaid the altar with bronze. Then he made all the utensils of bronze, the ash buckets, the shovels, basins, meat forks, and fire pans. Next, he made a bronze grating and installed it halfway down the side of the altar under the ledge. He cast four rings and attached them to the corners of the bronze grating to hold the carrying poles. <clears throat> he made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He inserted the poles through the rings on the side of the altar. The altar was hollow and was made from planks. Building the wash basin, Exodus 38, 8. 
Bezalel made the bronze wash basing and his bronze stand from bronze mirrors donated by the women who served at the entrance of the tabernacle. Building the courtyard, Exodus 38, 9 through 20. Then Bezalel made the courtyard, which was enclosed with curtains made of finely woven linen. On the south side, the curtains were 150 feet long. They were held up by 20 posts set securely in 20 bronze bases. He hung the curtains with silver hooks and rings. He made similar set of curtains for the north side, 150 feet of curtains held up by 20 posts set securely in bronze bases. He hung the silver or he hung the curtains with silver hooks and rings. The curtains on the west end of the courtyard were 75 feet long, hung with silver hooks and rings and supported by 10 posts set into 10 bases. The east end, of the, east end, the front, was also 75 feet long. The courtyard entrance was on the east end, flanked by two curtains. The curtain on the right side was 22 and a half feet long and supported by three posts set into bases. The curtain on the left side was also 22 and a half feet long and was supported by three posts set into basins. All the curtains used in the courtyard were made of finely woven linen. Each post had a bronze base and all the hooks and rings were silver. The tops of the posts of the courtyard were overlaid with silver and the rings to hold up the curtains were made of silver. He made the curtains for the entrance to the courtyard of finely woven linen and he decorated it with beautifully decorated it with beautiful embroidery in blue, purple, and scarlet thread. It was 30 feet long and its height was seven and a half feet just like the curtain of the courtyard walls. It was supported by four posts, each set securely in its own bronze base. The tops of the posts were overlaid with silver, and the hooks and the rings were also made of silver, and the tent pegs used in the tabernacle and courtyard were made of bronze. Sounds beautiful. <laughs> inventory of materials, Exodus 38, 21 through 31. This is an inventory of the materials used in building the tabernacle of the covenant. The Levites compiled the figures as Moses directed. And Ithamar, the son of Aaron, and the priest served as recorder. Bezalel, the son of Uri, grandson of Hur, and the tribe of Judah, made everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He was assisted by Oholiab, the son of Ahizamach, the, of the tribe of Dan, a craftsman, expert in engraving, designing, embroidering with blue, purple, and scarlet thread on fine linen. The people brought special offerings of gold, totaling 2,193 pounds as measured by weight of the sanctuary shekel. This gold was used throughout the tabernacle. The whole community of Israel gave 7,545 pounds of silver as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. This silver came from the tax collected from each man registered in the census. The tax is one becca, which is half a shekel based on the sanctuary shekel. The tax was collected from 603,555 men who had reached their 20th birthday. The 100 bases for the frames of the sanctuary walls and for the posts supporting the inner curtain required 7,500 pounds of silver, about, 20, about 75 pounds for each base. The remaining 45 pounds of silver was used to make the hooks and rings to overlay the tops of the posts and to overlay the tops of the posts. The people also brought special offerings of 5,310 pounds of bronze, which was used for casting the bases of the posts at the entrance of the tabernacle. And for the bronze altar, with its bronze grating and all of its altar utensils. Bronze was also used to make the bases for the posts that support the curtains around the courtyard. The bases for the curtain at the entrance of the courtyard and all of the tent pegs for the tabernacle and the courtyard. Clothing for the priests, Exodus 39, one. The craftsmen made beautiful sacred garments of blue, purple, and scarlet cloth. Clothing for Aaron to wear while ministering in the holy place, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Ooh, I'm out of breath this morning. Making the ephod, Exodus 39, two through seven. Bezalel made the ephod of finely woven linen and embroidered it with gold and blue and purple and scarlet thread. He made gold thread by hammering out thin sheets of gold and cutting it into fine strands. With great skill and care, he worked it into the fine linen with the blue, purple, and scarlet thread. The ephod consisted of two pieces, front and back, joined at the shoulders with two shoulder pieces. The decorative sash was made of the same materials, finely wo woven linen and embroidered with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They mounted the two onyx stones in the settings of the gold filigree. The stones were engraved with the names of the tribes of Israel, just as a seal is engraved. He fastened these stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as a reminder that the priest 
a reminder that the priests represent the people of Israel. All of this was done just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Making the chess piece, Exodus 39, 8 through 21. Bezalel made the chess piece with great skill and care. He made it to match the ephod using finely woven linen embroidered with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. He made the chess piece of a single piece of cloth folded to form a pouch nine inches square. They mounted four rows of gem gemstones on it. The first row contained red carnelian, pale green peridot, and an emerald. The second row contained a turquoise, a blue lapis lazuli, and a white moonstone. The third row contained an orange jacinth and a gate and a purple amethyst. The fourth row contained a blue green barrel, burl, barrel, an onyx and a green jasper. All of these stones were set in the gold filigree. Each stone represented one of the 12 sons of Israel and the name of that tribe was engraved on it like a seal. To attach the chess piece to the ephod, they made braided cords of pure gold thread. They, made, they also made two settings of filigree and two gold rings and attached them to the top corners of the chess piece. They tied two of the gold cords to the rings on the chess piece. They tied the other ends of the cords to the gold setting on the shoulder pieces of the ephod. Then they made two more gold rings and attached them to the inside edges of the chess piece next to the ephod. Then they made two more gold rings and attached them to the front of the ephod below the shoulder pieces, just above the knot where the decorative sash was fashion, fastened to the ephod. They attached the bottom rings of the chess piece to the rings on the ephod with blue cords. In this way, the chess piece was held securely to the ephod above the decorative sash. All of this was done just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Additional clothing for the priests, Exodus 39, 22 through 31. Bezalel made a robe that is worn with the ephod from a single piece of blue woven cloth with an opening for Aaron's head in the middle of it. The opening was reinforced with a woven collar so it would not tear. They made pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and attached them to the hem of the robe. They also made bells of pure gold and placed them between the pomegranates along the hem of the robe with bells and pomegranates altering all the way around the hem. This robe was to be worn whenever the priests ministered to the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They made tunics for Aaron and his sons from fine linen cloth. The turban and special head covering were made of fine linen, and the undergarments were also made of finely woven linen. The sashes were made of finely woven linen and embroidered with blue, purple, and scarlet thread, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Finally, they made a sacred medallion, the badge of holiness of pure gold. They engraved it like a seal with these words, holy to the Lord. They attached the medallion with a blue cord to Aaron's turban, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. All right, that's it. That's February 13th. Tomorrow it looks like we're moving on to Moses looking at the work and confirming it was done in line with what God had commanded him. So, all right, that's it for this morning steps. I hope you got on the treadmill with me. If not, I hope you danced around the kitchen or something to move your body. <laughs> or I hope you just sat and drank your coffee and listened. As long as you get the word in, that's what's important every morning. I think that has made a huge impact on my mood. I mean, I'm typically in a good mood, for the most part, ask my husband that, he would totally disagree. But for the most part, inside my head, I'm in a good mood. And I think starting the morning off with the word every morning has greatly increased that. It just puts me right on the right path every morning. So I'm, I'm enjoying this very much. And I like sharing it with you ladies. So, okay, or gentlemen, if there's any gentlemen watching. Okay, I love you all. I will talk to you on the treadmill tomorrow morning. Right now I'm gonna go upstairs and make some brekkie. All right. Have a great Saturday. All right. Bye.